everyone. Welcome to Wild on Design, presented by the Pacific Design Center and Women in Luxury Design. I'm your host, Jennifer Convey, and today we have a fabulous guest, Philip Brashad of Philip Jeffries. He has a passion for providing rock star experiences in everything he does, from business and client relations to family and community outreach. As president of Philip Jeffries, Philip manages the creative operations of a luxury wall covering company, overseeing global and domestic sales and marketing for both commercial and residential markets. Philip remains very proud of the relationships he has built with top designers around the world. His father, Eric, founded the company in 1976 with 10 grass cloths and an incredible entrepreneurial drive. Philip Jeffries remains a family-owned business to this day with Philip and his brother, his brother Jeffrey, at the helm. During the past 45 years, the family business has grown to be one of the largest and most respected companies in the global design industry with operations in New Jersey, London, and Singapore. Well, Without further ado, welcome, Philip. Hi. Hey, Jennifer. How are you? So great, great to be here. <laughs> there he is, folks. I don't this know. I mean, start. this introduction, I'm, I'm blown away. I don't know. I think it's all downhill from here. This is great. <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. It's so great. Oh, to my gosh. Here. You are so much fun. I love having you on. This is this is great. Been waiting for the opportunity. You are a busy, busy, busy man. My goodness. Would you just say you were at um, conferences and clients and shows? I'll tell you what, it felt so good to be out. I mean, during COVID, I really didn't do it, uh, go anywhere, a couple of small family trips. But uh, uh, since uh, October, uh, I was mm -hmm. out in LA. Uh, we just built an amazing showroom in the PDC, Philip Jeffries' uh, first showroom in LA. So that was so amazing to be out there to see the team, see some friends out there. And uh, I was just recently at a, con a design leadership conference in Arizona and well, then went right. uh, to Chicago where we just opened a showroom. Uh, uh, I, I, I got to see family. I went to visit my daughter in Michigan at the University of Michigan. Uh, any go blue uh, people out there. And You're then amazing. this past week, we uh, <laughs> did our first trade show since COVID, uh, the uh, boutique design show right here in uh, New York City. And I'm uh, happy to say it was super well attended, and um, it was amazing. It felt it felt like uh, back in the old days. I'm so old excited. days, right? Wow! I oh my goodness! I wasn't taking notes, but that's an awful lot. Yeah, I'm tired just thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs> what a whirlwind! Wow. Uh, okay, so let's. We so much to talk about. I'm just so glad to get you in between all of the things that you do. Oh my gosh. Okay. So 45 year run of a family owned business and you're still going, you're flying high. Tell us the origin story because there always is one, right? The origin story of growing up in this family because you didn't jump into the family business right away. You had a stellar career separately. So just walk us back to what that was like growing up in the family business from your earliest well, memories. Yeah, well, I'll tell you uh, early on, uh, I don't know if most folks know this, but our, uh, Jeffrey, uh, uh, and just so everyone knows, Jeffrey's not here, but he he's my brother and my uh, business partner. And, uh, um, uh, and I've known him for every year except for three, because I'm three years older. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, our father, Eric, started the company uh, in our garage, which is 10 grass cloths. So early on, um, uh, the, the company was really a part of all we, we do uh, from uh, dad uh, finally getting out of the garage. To, uh, my grandfather, my mom's father uh, was a, a, an accountant at a small steel uh, company and he convinced his boss to let my dad use the second floor of a steel warehouse. We had no heating, uh, no electricity. Uh, no telephone. So dad actually would have to go across the street to the diner to stay warm and, and make phone calls till the trucks arrive. Wow. And, uh, and from there, he actually started a small wallpaper store. So early on, uh, mom did the books. Uh, dad ran the, the business. And you heard of a mom and pop. This was a mom, pop and Nana. And dad's mom, Mindy, uh, my grandma, my Nana, was actually a, a designer and would help out on the weekends. Uh, with dad at Amazing. the wallpaper store. And it was from there, you know, we'd cut samples in the back, sweep the floors. Uh, eventually he moved to a small uh, distribution business. So 
uh, you know, a warehouse and Jeffrey and I both worked. I say we climbed the family ladder in the warehouse. <laughs> so literally, <laughs> there's no forklifts carrying some of those wall coverings as grass falls up and down. Uh, at, yeah. When you say age. that, you really mean it literally. <laughs> I literally mean it. Yes. So, um, and then, great. then, right. So you guys were very young kids working in the Ma, Pa and Nana business. I love that. But then you, both of you went off and did your own thing. Now you went to, well, you graduated with honors at the University of Michigan. You went, got. Um, I know you wouldn't degree. think looking at me that, you know, I would have done well in school, but I did okay. <laughs> yes, we do. I don't know what you're speaking about. I really don't. Of course, look at you. And oh, wow. Anyway, and look what you've accomplished. Anyway, if you, uh, you want me to brag about you, you want to tell everybody. Oh, no, you know, no. Okay, London School of Economics. You speak Spanish and studied Spanish in Spain. Also, I mean, what haven't you done? You know, business degree and graduated with honors, uh, University of Michigan. And then, wait, then you did not go into the family business. Okay, so after graduation, you actually wound up, you know, running sales in a Fortune 500 company. All right, tell us about that and the transition later. Sure. Well, uh, I got I got a job right out of school, and I kind of fell into the uh, the business. I, I I was a poli sci and communications major, and I decided I didn't want to be a lawyer. So I really wasn't sure 100 what to do, but I wanted to find myself, and I ended up in Chicago working uh, at a logistics company that uh, be, became part of a Fortune 500 company, and I I, I ran a sales desk for them. And uh, uh, lo and behold, it it was uh, one of these operations with a big trading desk and lots of yelling and screaming and great energy. And uh, I, I learned a lot early on. And, and uh, I say that uh, I really helped it. I think it, it gave me a, a great uh, other side of the business and perspective. And I did that for a number of years. And actually Jeffrey's, I don't know if, if he'll like that I said this, but his first job was actually as my intern at that company. So- Ooh, older, you younger what. brothers rivalry, maybe. I, I don't know, I love that though. Yeah. Too late, cat's out of the bag, you said it. Uh, I love that, why wouldn't you be proud of that? That's awesome. But I love how close uh, you are. So after doing that for a number of years, we're uh, running um, uh, a, lar- uh, a pretty large team at, the, at the, this uh, uh, logistics company. What basically happened was uh, I was living in Chicago and my brother was, worked at Ernst & Young. So he was a consultant and he would every week travel to Minnesota, uh, for uh, many, many months working on the Anderson Windows uh, account or Memphis working on the FedEx account. But every weekend we would come together at our TikTok diner in Chicago and talk mm-hmm. about what would we do someday. And it was the uh, late 90s. And we said, maybe we should go to Silicon Valley or go to uh, uh, San Francisco and get involved in tech. We had some friends who were doing pretty well there. And then, mm-hmm. you know, Jeffrey had a good friend in real estate. We said, maybe real estate. And we said, what if we talked to dad? You know, uh, at the time it was a, a smaller mom and pop operation, less than 10 people. But we said, he says, I say it, I say he said it. But one of us pounded on the table and said, when will someday be today? Let's do it. And uh, oh, uh, that following year I came on board. And then the, the year after that, Jeffrey followed me. And uh, we were, I, I think I was employee number eight or nine. And I think Jeffrey was 10. I think there was one in between us. And it's, it's fun to see that the company's grown uh, from uh, those origins, working with dad uh, and growing from, uh, and mom, and growing from uh, less than 10 people to uh, offices, like you said, in Singapore and in London and uh, all over. That's so uh, we're it's just wonderful. so grateful of all the support of the design community out there that uh, we're creating what we think are uh-huh. some beautiful things and seeing, uh, you know, people like them. People love, love you, love you, love the brand, love the products. It's, it's uh, stunning. Real quickly, um, so what was that like, the transition? Did you, I mean, you know, you come into mom and dad's business. Um, if you would share, you know, what was the major shift? There had to have been one when your two sons come back and say, hey, guess what? <laughs> We're taking over the store. <laughs> well, I'll tell you what, early on, um, uh, that first year I was knocking on doors in Chicago. Like I said, it was 2000. Uh, as we all remember, 9-11 happened. wasn't the best uh, fall season. Definitely was a hard year or two, but knocking on doors. And early on, uh, wallpaper, let alone natural wall covering, was, was not so in vogue. It was, I was knocking on a lot of doors, uh, getting a lot of no's. 
but continued to push through and um, uh, brought in uh, my first big account. I remember uh, I worked with Crate and Barrel and we did a whole rollout to all their stores, all the display. And Thanks. that was a big moment. Big. And uh, like I said, Jeffrey moved to, to New Jersey. I moved to New Jersey. And it wasn't for about a year or two that all three of us working together with dad uh, and mom uh, helped shape the company and help uh, uh, putting in a lot of seven days a week to get to where we are today. Sure. I, it's an amazing story. It's so inspirational and aspirational um, in so many ways, you know, family owned, working together, you and a sibling, I mean, uh, and, and really running with this and running it up and, and continued uh, success. You're just going higher and higher. Um, well, Jennifer, one I, thing I'll say is like for anyone else who has, and, I, and I've actually spoken to some friends in the industry who, who've asked me who uh, have children that are, uh, that they've been talking about coming in and I don't know if anyone's listening uh, is part of a family business or has any children and they have the question. And one of the things I say that is really great is to have some perspective. And it was important to dad and it was also really important to myself and Jeffrey that we did work for somebody else. That I, and I think it's important to uh, have uh, uh, someone uh, tell you no and, and tell you that's not a great idea and, and, uh, and to change that dynamic a little bit. And, that's great. Um, and then even early on, it, uh, I'll say, you know, uh, it was tough and we did have some rooms that we would go into to have conversations that we hope that the rest of the staff can hear. But every, um, you know, quarter, there, those conversations became less and less. And we, uh, and, and we learned to work together because um, it's tough. I say it's, it's very difficult to work with your family, but it's also very fulfilling. How fabulous. That's such great advice that they gave you. What a generous advice. So get a perspective, go out, spread your wings, learn about yourself, learn about the world, come back to me in a few years and see if you still want to. And it's better all the way around, right? Big game. I think so what do you think, Jennifer? I think, I think, I think you're onto something. I think it worked out. I think, I don't think you need to do over. Mm -mm. No, all good. Um, so let's talk about present day, present day. Um, what I know that you, Philip Jeffries has very unique hold and place in the market. And what sets you apart are quite a few things. But in these particular times, what do you see as the huge advantage of Philip Jeffries to the design community and to clients in general? Well, I think now when um, a designer is uh, in process and they're talking to their client and right now it, it's not easy I don't care if you're in the design industry, in the restaurant industry, in, in the hotel industry. Right now, uh, we all have a lot of obstacles that we're facing. And I think one of the keys that I'm hearing from designers all over the country, all over the world, honestly, is um, it's very difficult to get material. Supply chain, supply chain, supply chain is what everyone's talking about. And Absolutely. yes, right? Is that what you're hearing as well? It's constantly it's in the news it's in our news it's in our industry like you said you're rightly said um aptly said that every industry is suffering supply chain we just can't get the orders you can't get the product you can't wherever in the chain it stopped you're just not getting it and so i know you guys aren't exactly in that same situation though well we've obviously we're, ne we're never perfect and we've had some bumps in the road but i'll tell you one thing dad imbued upon us early on is, is he said to us uh, stock is king and that clients will wait uh, for many things, but you know what? Sometimes they won't wait for the wall covering. So with this, one of the things that uh, we've uh, made one of our uh, pillars at Philip Jeffries is to really have great delivery and great stock. So at our facility here in, in New Jersey, uh, we're 20, or have you heard of New Jersey? <laughs> <laughs> you, well, I say we're the, we're the land, of, uh, we're the land <laughs> of reality television and luxury wall covering. We're just uh, 20 miles outside of Manhattan, but in our 65,000 square foot That's facility, awesome. we're stocking over 1 million yards. So you won't even believe this, where I'm talking to friends who've told me some wallpaper and fabric is taking six, 10, I heard somebody tell me 50 weeks, almost a whole year. Oh, we nice. used to have over a thousand items. I think it's actually 1500 items right now that you can literally order today by 5 p.m. New York time, which of course is two o'clock LA time. 
and you can literally have it tomorrow. As long as you pay for shipping, for next day shipping, you can order today and have tomorrow. I don't think there's anyone in the industry no. who's doing that with wall covering, let alone for fabrics. No, and, and your caliber and the beauty and the artisanship. I mean, this is, no, nobody sold, I'm sold. Philip Jeffries has innovation and technology. You've been talking about it. Share with everybody some of the innovations that you guys have come up with. It's pretty exciting. Well, uh, thank you. You know, when it comes to um, our industry, obviously fast lead time is so important, like we were talking about earlier, but I think even more important is, is design. Is it beautiful? Is it inspirational? Is it, is it something that I have to have? Does it create passion and excitement? And one of the things uh, about Philip Jefferies is where we've actually doubled down and have now over nine full-time designers on staff where everything from weavers to uh, graphic print designers to uh, people uh, helping with some of our artisanal type of product. And actually, uh, actually, we give our designers time every month and throughout every week to actually a studio time where they're drafting and creating and beautiful things. That's and one funny. of the things that we've done is taken what we're known for over the years that dad started with, like the grasses and the weaves and beautiful silks and linens and have now added uh, some amazing technology and innovation to it. So for instance, this beautiful uh, uh, item behind me that we just launched called Offset, we're actually taking uh, some digital printing technology where we're uh, taking our silks, taking our linens, and actually creating these, pr printing these beautiful designs using this new technology. And the one behind me might be black and white, but some of them are gorgeous watercolors that literally have over a thousand colors in them. Oh my gosh, this is uh, so more colors to paint with, more things to create. This is so exciting. So for both clients and designers, that's astounding. So you have so many colors to paint with and so many options. Uh, talk a little bit more about the innovation and the customization. Yeah, so uh, one of the things that's uh, pretty pretty in innovative and we think pretty innovative and, and clients have been uh, freaking out over is uh, our new program we call Pure Imagination. Uh, we have uh, one called uh, Mashup, one called Pure Imagination. So Mashup, if you think of Jeffrey and I, like DJs mashing up, you know, uh, something here, or Pure Imagination, uh, something, whatever the client comes up with in their own mind. So with that, they can take any of our 30 or 40 different textured backgrounds from silks and linens to performance-based washable vinyls. They could take one of our patterns and pick which colors, send us uh, pan, uh, paint chips or Pantone colors, and we can do that. Or the latest is now they can even send us a sketching. And uh, we, if they want, if they're an artist or if they just want to see a wall covering of their own sketches, we could do that as well. So, you know, with, with when it comes to design, I think we're always trying to create innovation and, and designers, interior designers all over the world want to sometimes make something their own, want to make something right. that's never been done before. And Absolutely. now with our pure imagination program at Philip Jefferies, they can do that and make a one of a kind for their client, make something couture uh, and bespoke. Very that's exciting. fantastic and so exciting. Oh, I bet that's a huge hit. That's already launched, right? Yeah, it's, it's, it's really, uh, people are, are, are going uh, are really crazy on it. We have a couple of in-house designers that we've committed just to this program. And it's a fun program uh, where some, like I said, some folks want to take the pattern I have before and, and just take the uh, fabric or the rug sample and we're matching it. And then some are, are starting from scratch. So- Oh, I love exciting. this. This is so exciting. It's, it's a million possibilities. How fun. Oh, uh, I can't wait to dive into that myself. Um, what is PJ Vision? I wanted to ask uh, you about that. Well, ah. speaking of innovation, one of the things that uh, is important to Jeffrey and I is that we're continuing to wow uh, other, the client. We say one of the values of Phil Jeffrey is, is, is wowing. And if we say wowing means if here's what everyone else in the industry is doing, or here's what we're currently doing, what are two or three things more we could do to literally make the client say, wow. So with that, we launched this new program called PJ Vision. So you can go to the Apple or the Google uh, uh, or the uh, Android uh, uh, store. It's called PJ Vision. Everybody mm -hmm. check it out. You put it on your phone and you take a picture of your actual uh, room. Super easy, it takes less than 10 seconds. And then 
you have literally hundreds of Philip Jeffries wall coverings that you could put up on the wall. And you, you're, if you, and you could still have your mirror there, your furniture there, the rugs, the curtains, they're all still there. And all you virtual. Just, you could just keep flipping which one you like best. Because one of the things, you know, Jennifer, I do a lot is, is I talk to a lot of designers and I, mm -hmm. and I ask, what are some of your pains? What are some of your pain points when you're working with mm -hmm. clients, when you're working with uh, other industry folks? What are some of the, the obstacles you have? And one of the things I hear from designers all the time is they say, you know what, Philip, you loaned me a huge three yard panel where I went to the showroom, your new PDC showroom, and they actually so nice. They let me a whole wing sample, but the client still just didn't understand it. So at PJ Vision, we're helping the designer share their vision of what the wall covering is gonna look like or the room's gonna look like. And people have been using it have been like freaking out. They're just loving it, and it, which makes me so happy. So great. <laughs> That's fantastic. I mean, so innovative, so exciting. All right, so you're a rock star on your IGTV series. I mean, it's so much fun. You have way too much fun, honestly. Tell everyone what it is, where they can see it, when it's on, and how it came about. You're so funny. You're the rock star. I'm not the rock star. But I'll well, tell you, you it are. is fun. It is a lot of fun. You've got to watch it, everybody. If you're not watching it, it's called Behind the Design. And it's on at 2 p.m. New York time, 11 a.m. West Coast time, uh, Pacific time, on Tuesdays. Sometimes it changes, but it's usually 11 a.m. West Coast time on Tuesdays. And I have some of the top people in the industry. We've had uh, editors from some of the top magazines. Uh, we've had some of the top residential and hospitality designers on. And we talk about what's going on uh, in COVID, in uh, design right now, in trending, on uh, dealing with crazy clients, and uh, where things are trending. So uh, uh -huh. it's a lot of fun. Uh, please, everyone. Uh, Take a look. And, and you know what? It all started because COVID, what are we going to do? Scary moments. Let's throw some good energy out to the universe and see what happened. And I'll tell you what, I literally had dinner with someone Thursday night and they said, you helped get me through COVID. I would always be like crying or upset at this. And it's like, you made me laugh for 20 or 30 minutes. It's so true. Tuesday. Isn't that great? If you, I loved it. Anyone who hasn't seen it, you must, you must. You are so fun. You're a great interviewer. That's why I had to have you on because somebody needs to interview you. We, we need to hear your story. You're so good. And you have too much fun. I love it. I love it. So thank you for being here. It's awesome. I know at Philip Jeffries, you and the brand are very involved in philanthropy and specifically about the uh, plant a tree mission. Please tell everyone about that. It's extraordinary what you've accomplished. Thanks so much for saying it. it really does mean a lot. Um, you know, a number of years ago, Jeffrey and I said, you know what? We love our company. We love uh, being the world's best wall covering company as, as our goal, but there's got to be more than that. And a number of years ago, we said, let's see what we can do to give back. So with that, we launched a number of campaigns, including one we call PJ Plants. And PJ Plants is our one for one program. So we partnered with the Arbor Day Foundation and with every order that comes in, we plant a tree. And since this program started, are you ready for this? Uh, many, many years ago, we've planted over 204,716 trees last time I got the last update. And that was, that was a month or two ago. So are they all in the same place? Is it a forest? <laughs> I'll tell you what, every, day, every year, our team meets with the Arbor Day Foundation, including Jeffrey and myself, and they go through a number of locations where there's been forest fires or uh, significant issues, and uh, we pick it. So, uh, for instance, in 2019 was, I think, the last one off the top of my head that we worked on. It was a forest in North Carolina. In mm -hmm. the past, it was on uh, Northern California. There was one where we did Alabama. So That's amazing. Year, and, what yeah, an astounding number. Well, congratulations to you. If only everybody did this, but they don't. You do. Philip Jeffries does. That's fantastic. Uh, do you want to throw okay. out? Yeah. If any other manufacturer is interested in joining us, we encourage you. Be happy to share all the information. Please, I'd love you to be part of the program. Contact me, Philip and Philip Jeffries, or, or give me a call. And I'd love to share how we can all help you back. Please do. That's fantastic. Okay. So, Philip Jeffries, amazing company planting forests. Um, they have quick delivery because they have stock, they have technology, they have an array of millions of choices of the most beautiful textiles. 
and patterns and designs. They have a team of designers. What am I leaving out? What every tell us more? The final thoughts on Philip Jeffries and what do you see as trending? Well, in terms of um, Philip Jeffries, we hope to inspire. We hope to always give you an amazing experience and always give you uh, put a smile on your face if you're a designer. So. Uh, to everyone who's you, uh, who's been a client before, thank you so much. We really appreciate your support, and we promise to always continue to innovate uh, and come come up with more fabulous products that you just want to wrap around your room like a nice blanket or wow you like a piece of art. And uh, <laughs> and we continue to promise not to disappoint. Thank you, Philip. We'll come see you and everything Philip Jeffries has. Thank you. Jennifer, thank you so much. Uh, I can't wait to see you next time I'm in LA. Again, everyone, please come visit us at the Pacific Design Center on the sixth floor to see the new Philip Jeffries showroom. Hope to see you all soon. Thanks again. Great to see you. Thank you. And thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thank you to Pacific Design Center. Bye.